Hey, welcome to our At Home Film Series. I'm your watch party host, Andre Walker. While we can't gather on Art Hill as we have in years past, we still wanted to continue this fun summer St. Louis tradition in a new virtual way. This year's theme, Summer Escapes. And we have an amazing lineup of films, trivia, food, and fun. We're swapping our picnic blankets and food truck favorites for sofas and carry out specials from some of your go-to local restaurants. So grab your friends and family and join us right here every Friday night in July. A special thank you goes out to our event partner, Sauce Magazine, and all of our restaurant partners. Local restaurants have joined with us to provide some special menu options. Visit slam.org slash film series to see the participating restaurants and to find a special movie inspired recipe from Sauce Magazine. Get your shades, suit up, and check out this dynamic duo tracking down extraterrestrials in tonight's movie, Men in Black. But before we get to the show, let's kick things off with amazing cocktail and mocktail recipes prepared by Slam Events. So Mensa, we're back, and what do you have for us today? So today we're actually doing a Nebula Smash. So this cocktail is going to be based on the Men in Black movie. Okay. So the cocktail is relatively simple as well. We have a bourbon, simple syrup, and then we have some blackberries as well as mint. Oh, well, let's dive into it. So we're going to start off with about three ounces of bourbon. Today we're using Makers. Bourbon. What kind of taste? Talk to me through the taste, what that kind of has. So the difference between bourbon and whiskey really is bourbon has to be made strictly in the U.S. It has to be 51% corn, oh, wow. which gives it more of a sweet finish. Awesome. Yeah. Then we're gonna do a half an ounce of simple syrup. Sweeten it up a little bit. Sweeten it up a little bit. So this is a relatively sweet cocktail, but it is gonna finish off with soda, just okay. to lighten it up. Yeah. A few mint leaves. Where can we get the mint? Just from a local grocery store? Local grocery store. Everything's very close. Very, yeah. <laughs> if you don't have it at home, I'm, grocery store is what, five minutes from all of us? <laughs> and some blackberries. So we'll throw in probably five or six blackberries. Some ice. Let's actually smash it because we want the ice to be actually crushed, as well as get the oils out of the mint. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one. The mint and black, and so more like a particular has darker but sweeter taste. Darker and sweeter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My type of drink sounds like. <laughs> We're gonna put some fresh ice in the glass. Strain it right over the top. Get any of those seeds out from the blackberries. Just finish it off with some soda. Is this just regular club soda? Regular club soda. Okay. And then we have a blackberry as well as a mint leaf for our garnished. Wanna go ahead and give it a try? Oh yeah, this is good. You all definitely have to try this out. All right, so Mitchell, if we wanted to make the mocktail version of a Nebula Smash, what would that look like? So for the Nebula Smash, it'll be as simple as just removing the bourbon and just adding some black tea, about three ounces. Well, Mitchell, we appreciate it. Thank you again. Thank you.
Contemporary art allows us to see things in the world that we wouldn't see every day. Contemporary art is a great thing. It can be thought-provoking, it can engage with contemporary social and political realities, and art can also be, be fun. When you come here, what's so fantastic is you can see the best of Renaissance art, the best of Chinese bronzes, you can see the history of German art through Beckmann and the Expressionists, and then you can come into these buildings and you can see world-class contemporary art that frames all of those movements and brings it into your own time. The East Building, which was designed by the British architect David Chipperfield, opened in 2013. It showcases light and this architectural framework that was made specifically to bring the best out of contemporary art. You can kind of trace a trajectory uh, from abstract expressionism through pop art and minimalism, right up to the most cutting edge work which is being made today. The area of the collection which is particularly distinguishing is a post-war German art. Uh, so we have a great uh, group of works by Gerhard Richter. I kind of joke that our kind of Mona Lisa of the contemporary collection is our Gerhard Richter Betty. We have an amazing early Ellsworth Kelly spectrum, which is just gorgeous in its luminosity and its color. We also have one of the most important works by Carrie James Marshall, Watts, 1963. We have a work by a Ghanaian artist, Ellen Atsui, a really beautiful Joe Mitchell. If you look at our collection, it does reflect a global range of artists. We're looking now to you know, acquire more work by important women artists, major African-American artists, Native American artists. Art being made by artists in real time. But I think, you know, the most important thing just to realize is that, you know, engaging with contemporary art is rewarding. It really can improve your life, actually. So you think you're a movie buff. Put your knowledge about this film to the test and challenge your friends. Get creative with items found around your home and make an artful keepsake inspired by tonight's movie. Don't worry, no art background is required. We're gonna walk you through step by step so you can get your creative juices flowing. Hi everybody, my name is Kira and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. So tonight's movie is Men in Black and one of the themes that stands out to me from the movie is that of memory. So really thinking about the ways that memory helps us understand and relate to the world, and then also what would happen if you were to lose those memories. So I also saw a lot of overlap between memory and journaling. So I wanted to show you how to make your own journals that are kind of a combination between a, a scrapbook and a sketchbook. And so we can combine some elements from your life, like photographs, put in little pockets and pictures, as well as blank pages where you can draw and sketch and write. And then we'll sew them together and make our own memory journals. So let's get started. In order to make our journals, we'll need to get together a few materials first. So you're going to want some pages to put inside your book. And I have a collection here of some different kinds of blank paper. They're pretty lightweight, like copy paper. I have some graph paper. I like a few different colors. 
And then also I gathered some materials, kind of like scrapbooking from different experiences in life. So things that could be really fun, maps. I have some old artwork and some prints of photographs that I made. Even like the bags that you get at gift shops when you go on trips. Magazine pages can be really cool. Or if you think you want to put a pocket or something in, you could find an envelope and use that to make kind of like a pocket or an envelope in your book. And then you'll also need some paper for a cover. And so something a little bit heavier would work really well. Cardstock is really great. You could also, this is a calendar that I found that was made out of cardstock. That was kind of fun. You could use a cereal box, which works really great. And then you could decorate it. So I painted that paper and just covered it. Um, or any kind of like, even construction paper or a little heavier weight paper would be great. And then you can have a lot of fun with designing your cover. And then a few other things that you'll need, you'll need some thread to sew it together. So any kind of sewing thread would work well or embroidery floss. You'll need, um, this is called a bone folder, which helps to make your creases, but a Sharpie or a knife, butter knife could work great. And something to punch holes. So this is an awl, which you use in book binding. But if you don't have one of those, just a regular nail um, or even a needle might work. So what I'm gonna do is, I cut my paper down to seven by 10, but you could really use it at any size that you want. So you could leave it at eight and a half by 11. And I'm just gonna slide these little elements in different places in my paper stack. Um, kind of just wherever I feel like it. Um, and then you wanna tap them all together so they're nice and even. Make sure all your pages are even. And then we can fold them. So you wanna make sure, that's why it's helpful if you tap it all together so you don't have any loose ends that stick out. And then you can fold it and you wanna to try to line up your top corner as closely as possible. And then you can fold it. So I like to take a finger from the middle and slide it across and then crease it up and down. And so this is where something like a Sharpie or a bone folder is really helpful because you can make a nice crease on your page. Um, and then I went ahead and pre-folded my cover, but you would want to do the same thing. And one thing about your cover is you'll notice that it's slightly bigger than my pages. So you want to make sure it's not exactly the same size, otherwise your pages might stick out when you fold it. So you want it to be slightly bigger and fold it all together. And then we're going to punch some holes. So I made a ruler in order to know where to put my holes and I measured them out three holes that are evenly spaced. But you can also just eyeball it. You don't have to measure it. It's really your journal, so it's up to you. So I'm marking three holes, and the stitch that we're gonna do is called a pamphlet stitch. So if you wanted to look that up online, you could and you would find some images of how to do that. So the first thing we need to do before we stitch it is to poke our holes. So this is where your awl comes in handy or your nail. And I like to go in at kind of a 45 degree angle um, but you could also, if you want to lay your book down and go in like that, that's fine too. You want to get it as close to the center of your book as you can. Once you have your holes, we are ready to stitch. So as I mentioned, the stitch is called a three hole pamphlet stitch. And so as you can see, I didn't, I'm not going to tie a knot in my thread. But I'm going to start, I'm going to go through the middle of the inside of the book. And I'm just gonna pull it through almost all the way, but not all the way. So we're gonna leave this tail on the inside. And then we wanna come up through either hole on either side. And sometimes it can be a little hard to get through all your pages, but you can nagle it. So you'll come up through that hole. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the middle hole and go through your other outside hole. So it ends up looking a little bit like a pretzel. And just make sure you're not losing your tail. And then the last thing is you're gonna come up again through that middle hole. And so you have both your threads on the inside of your book. And then I have them on either side of this middle thread. So I'm just gonna pull my needle off and then pull it tight. And then you can go ahead and you can tie a knot. Um, and then it's up to you, you could tie a bow if you want. You could tie a couple of knots to keep it tight. And then you could cut off that extra string or you could leave it as kind of a bookmark thing. And then you have a book. And so then once you have that, you can go ahead and you can decorate the cover. You could leave it blank. It's really yours to play with. So we 
we hope that you have a lot of fun experimenting and making your journals and enjoy Men in Black. Thanks. I never actually started out to be a collector, but I loved art and I wanted to have art on the wall. I always loved having pictures on the wall. And so I started out buying one piece, another piece, and I was dabbling into it. Abstraction was my reason and my love and my passion for art, and that's why I collected it. I was able to connect up with some of those black artists that were part of a, a movement like ab abstract expressionism. We developed close relationships and close ties. I had my first exposure to any museum at the St. Louis Art Museum. And I just felt like uh, because my mother and father exposed us to so many of the arts, I thought it was very appropriate to give it to the St. Louis Art Museum. That was my first and only choice, actually. When I see this work at the St. Louis Art Museum, it's just so satisfying, it's gratifying, and it gives me a sense that this work is gonna live on, these artists are going to be remembered, I think when people really can embrace the work and take down their barriers, it's gonna open their mind to new possibilities, perhaps. They'll take another look and another look and another look and all of a sudden, they love abstraction. Sauce was the first culinary dedicated media publication in the metro area. Our St. Louis food scene wouldn't be what it is without Sauce Magazine. They also throw badass parties and they're about the community. The thing about Sauce is we are knee deep local. We want to know what's happening to our neighbors, to the person around the corner, and that's why we started. It's your fork, St. Louis. It's your fork. Your, your fork. fork. It's your plate, St. Louis. It's your, your plate. plate. It's your table. Your table. It's your table. It's your table. It's your sauce, St. Louis.
A big thank you to everybody that shared their picks for last week's At Home Film Series Challenge. Today's challenge is to create a sculpture using items found right around your home, inspired by a creature from tonight's film, Men in Black. Share your extraterrestrial creations with us using the hashtag At Home Film Series and tagging us at STL Art Museum. We're sure it'll be out of this world. Thank you to our annual and BAC members for your support of the Art Museum during our COVID-19 shutdown. Museum members enjoy many benefits, including free admission to exhibitions, exclusive events, discounts, and more. Sounds good, right? For more information on how you can become a museum member, visit slam.org slash membership. Hi, I'm Jennifer Thomas, the Director of Annual Programs at the St. Louis Art Museum. I want to take a quick moment to thank all of our members in the audience this evening. It is through your support that makes programs like these possible. I look forward to welcoming you back to the museum very soon. And in the meantime, I hope you have your favorite snacks and enjoy tonight's movie. Thank you to the members of the museum's corporate partnership program. We are so grateful for your generous support during the closure and look forward to welcoming you back to the gallery soon. Who was Millet? Millet was one of the great artists of the 19th century. His work had a real capacity to shock people, the basic premise of the exhibition is to argue for a new narrative for the history of modern art. It's one that starts in the work of Millet and it moves through other canonical artists. It's surprising just how widespread his influence was. Van Gogh was obsessed by Millet. Claude Monet was greatly influenced by Millet's work. Salvador Dali. Uh, Dali produced a whole body of work which was actually inspired by one particular painting by Millet, the Angelus. Once you start to look into his work, you realize how radical it was, but also in terms of his subject matter. He, he was representing rural life, but it was modern rural life, and the complexities of that life in all its harshness and, and richness too. It also speaks fundamentally to the importance of human dignity. If you look at these paintings, they're in, about you know, Millet justifying the importance of these workers. In the day and age in, in which we live today, that, that is an important message. These are paintings, drawings, pastels, they're coming from all over the world. You know, coming from Japan, from around America, from around Europe. All coming together in St. Louis. It's been exciting to see the show come together. It's really an exceptional, I would say once in a lifetime opportunity for people to see these works.
For a quick and easy way to find where you can watch tonight's movie, check out Real Good, the universal search engine for all streaming services. Go to slam.org slash film series, scroll to the how to watch section and find your preferred streaming service. Thank you for joining us for the At Home Film Series Watch Party. We'd like to once again thank Sauce Magazine and all of our partnering restaurants. We hope to see you right here next Friday at 8.30 p.m. for another amazing lineup of art activities, movie trivia, cocktail making, and more, followed by summer fun film. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this summer escape.